Do, 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 do. Yo, Ray for Dish. Welcome to the Dish. We thought we'd start today with a dispassionate reading of all the new restaurant openings in the Middle East this week, but unfortunately we don't have six hours, so we'll just need to pick a few. True. Uh, we'll start in Sharjah, where diners are getting a taste of Asian fusion at the wonderfully named Cheeky Chan. Cheeky Chan. I honestly want to go just for the name, and also for the unlimited dim sum on Tuesday evenings, but mainly the name. <laughs> In Dubai, uh, at the point, we also have the opening of Cook and Cook. Named, of course, after the two famous explorers, Captain Cook, who mapped New Zealand, and Captain Hook, who mapped Neverland. Actually, it's a seafood restaurant, so it's named after the hooking of the fish and then cooking. Yeah, but it's a seafood restaurant, so they still might have that alligator that they throw the, the clock in and they get stuck in. It, it's a crocodile, and no, they won't. <laughs> Also on the point, there's a new tapas bar from Passion F&B, who are the team behind Crescent? Yes, it's called Acapella and you can expect some great light bites for sharing, but it has a much bigger focus on the cocktail side of things. And since it's called Acapella, that gives me an excuse to sing... No singing, Simon. We lost so many subscribers last week. Really sorry, guys. Yeah, okay, okay. Sorry. Anyway, it looks like the street food trend is still in full swing with the opening of Street Culture, featuring classic street dishes from all over the globe. Yes, Emanuele Di Tullio has spent 17 years working in kitchens around the world and he's brought the best of each country back with him. Mm, so expect like sort of Vietnamese hot dogs, Korean tacos and even classic British fish and chips for me. Now what's typical Portuguese street food, Claudia? Well we have the small little cod cakes called uh, Pistage well, the Bacadilla. Apparently it's not good enough to get on the menu at street culture so please tell your nation to try harder. Street culture is licensed and has a wide cocktail range, but if you want to try that, or a cappella for that matter, you might want to avoid Tuesday the 2nd of April as that has been announced as a dry night in Dubai. Indeed. Now, at the weekend, Claudia attended a Women in F&B event at Ruya here in Dubai with some very inspirational people and I believe there were some interesting talking points. Yes, it was an amazing opportunity to meet and network with so many talented women in the industry uh, and I was particularly interested in Boone Coffee founder Arit Mohammed's point about there being a lack of diversity in the industry. Mm, she's from Ethiopia, yeah? Yes, and she's found people assuming that she's a supplier selling green beans, not the actual coffee roaster because she isn't a white guy with a beard. Ah, so that's why so many people always ask me to make them coffee. Yes. Okay. Um, it's an important topic to highlight though, so let's open it to the floor. What can we do to attract a more diverse crowd into F&B? Answers in the comments, please. Now it's the turn of Matteo Rizzo, chef behind Michelin starred Il Desco in Verona, Italy, to show the people of Dubai what his talents are. Yes, Leonardo in the recently opened Stella de Mari Hotel will host the chef all this week with a four course set dinner featuring the finest in Italian culinary creations apparently. Yes, Simon and I are actually heading along there this afternoon to receive a masterclass in Italian cooking from him, so we'll show you the results of that next week. I'm definitely going to be the best. We'll see. Mm. Uh, Gordon Ramsay, of course, was in Dubai last week for the opening of Hell's Kitchen and he made some interesting comments about influencers. Yes, the mild-mannered and very reserved Scott said that influencers should pay for their meals if they are going to review them. What do you think? Would that stop the listening of best meal ever, it's so amazing guys, reviews on Instagram? Or do we all accept that food bloggers are essentially paid advertisers? Comment below with your thoughts. And finally, you have only one week to go to enter the Cater Awards. That's just seven days. Oh, good maths. Now, what are you waiting for? Turn this rubbish off and go to cateremiddleeast.com forward slash awards now. Wait, finish watching the show. But there are 16 categories covering everything from bartender of the year, restaurateur of the year, kitchen hero of the year, you name it, it's there. Everything. And the only way to win is to enter. It all culminates in a huge gala dinner at the JW Marriott Marquis in June, which you don't want to miss. You'll even get to meet moi. Let's not scare them off. Ah, yeah, okay. Anyway, this has been The Dish. I've been Claudia De Brito. I've been Simon Ritchie. We'll, we'll see, see you next week. You're ready for Dish. dish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I went to university. <laughs> Not um, a good one. <laughs>